Hi guys, today we are going to be watching um, a video about multiplication, but uh, multiplying with zeros. And so what that means is what we're going to do today is we're going to take what we already know about multiplication and what we know about place value and try to multiply bigger numbers like tens, hundreds, um, and knowing and breaking apart numbers and decomposing them to make multiplication problems a little bit easier. So we're going to start with a problem. It says Kevin packs four bags of apples. Each bag contains 10 apples. How many apples does Kevin pack altogether? I'm hoping automatically you know that this is multiplication because if he has four bags and there's 10 in every one, that that's a repeated addition problem, which is also multiplication. So we're gonna talk about two ways to solve. The first way is um, equate, using an equation, but kind of with word form. So if I'm doing four times 10, I can break this into four times one ten. If I have four times one ten, that gives me four tens. And then I know that four tens is actually four. So that's just breaking it up into word form. And then we're also going to um, talk about standard form with multiplication. And the idea of why when we multiply by 10 or by zeros, do we just add that zero? So if I have four times 10, that's 40. Four times 100 is 400. Four times 1,000 is 4,000. And why can we just add that zero? And what I need us to realize is that on a place value chart, if we have four in the tens place, four tens, one, two, three, four, the reason that's 40 is because we know that each group of, we're just kind of skip counting by tens, but the reason that it works if I have like, let's say I have 43 in the hundreds place, the reason 43 hundreds is 430 is because if I have a hundreds place, every 10 hundreds, or every 10 tens gets me to a hundred. So as we move in place value, we are adding groups of zero. As we know, tens is one group of ten. Hundreds is ten groups of ten. Thousands is a hundred groups of tens. And as we go over, we continuously move and add more zeros to that place value area. Um, we're going to practice some problems in a variety of different ways. Um, so we're going to think about this one and we're going to solve it two ways. So in your notebooks, you're going to write this down. Rachel buys three packages of crayons. Each package contains 20 crayons. How many crayons? Again, she's got three packages. They each have 20. I could do 20 plus 20 plus 20, but instead I'm going to do three times 20. So if I were going to solve this with word form, I know that my original problem is three times 20. And even if you know the answer, that's fine, but you need to be able to break apart and decompose this number. So really in word form, I'm doing three ones times two tens. And I know that three times two tens would be six tens. And I know that six, if I have six in the tens place, that that would equal 60. Or I could solve with standard form, which might be more comfortable for a lot of you. And I know that three times 20 would give me just 60. It's important though that you can break down it to word form as well as um, so we're gonna practice some. Now these are always confusing to kids and you are going to see problems like this. Because I know that sometimes kids think, oh, the blanks make it harder. Well, the blanks are forcing you to really think about this problem and think about if you actually can decompose and understand what they're asking. So I'm going to model the first one, and then you're going to pause and do the other two on your own. The problem is 14 times 10. So they're saying equals something times some number of tens, which equals some number of tens, which equals something, which seems confusing. But whenever I see this equal sign, I know that this is like one problem and then this is another problem. So I'm gonna start with the first um, portion. It says 14 times 10 equals something times something 10. Well, if I'm doing 14 times 10, I'm noticing that I could do 14 times 110 because isn't 10 just 110? It's breaking it up into word form. Well, now I can solve this part. 14 times 110 is just 14 tens. And then I know that if I have 14 in the tens place, that I really have 100 and 40 because I know that once I have 10 tens, I can regroup that to be 100 and then I would have four tens left over. So if I have 14 tens, I can take 10 of them and move them to my hundreds place and I would get 100 and then I would have four tens left over which would get me 140. I want you to pause and see if you can figure out two and three. 
um, in your notebooks to see if you can solve those. And when you're ready, press play. Number two says seven times 30 equals something times something 10. I'm gonna solve that part first. So again, if I'm breaking something into tens, seven is just in the ones place. I can't break that apart. So I'm gonna put seven here. And then this 30 is really three times. This is making the problem easier for me to solve. I know seven times three, and if I don't know it, I can tick out seven, 14, 21. Seven times three is 21 tens. Again, I'm imagining 21 things in the tens place, and I can't have 21 things in the tens place. So if I would have to regroup 10 tens is 100, 20 tens is 200. If I have 21 tens, that is really 210. And the reason I feel like a lot of us know to just add that zero, if it's in the tens place, if it's in the hundreds, we add two zeros. If it's in the thousands, we add three zeros, because that's how many groups of 10 we are making, okay? Let's try one more. Nine times 40 equals nine times some amount of tens. Again, I'm gonna chunk it with the um, equal sign. I have, oh, they give me the nine here, and then it has times and blank tens. Well, in the number 40, I know that there are four tens, and then it says that equals so many tens. Well, nine times four tens, if I don't know what nine times four is, I can skip out. Um, nine, 18, 27, 36, so then I know that one, two, three, four, nine times four is 36 tens. Again, the tens, if I know that I'm in the tens place, I can add one zero because I have really 360, 36 tens gives me 360. Okay, we're gonna try another one. Um, I want you to pause and do these two in your notebook and then when you're ready, press play. This one says 58 times 60 equals something times something tens. I'm gonna solve that part first. Okay, I know right now that I'm gonna keep the 58 and I'm gonna break apart the 60 and I can break apart the 60 into six and 10. So six times 10 is 60. So in 60, I have six tens. Now I need to actually solve this. 58 times six tens is what? This isn't something you can do in your head. You are going to have to solve it on the side of your paper and again, if I don't know six times eight, then I need to skip count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six times eight is 48. I can't put 48 in the one place. I'm gonna keep the eight and move it to four. Six times five, I already have it. One, two, three, four, five is 30. Plus that extra four that I regrouped, which is 34 then I would get 348 tens. Again, I know that if I have 348 tens, I'm adding a zero to that because I am working with numbers in the tens place. So I'm gonna have 3,480. Okay, let's try one more. 47 times 80. Again, I'm breaking that up. I know I actually am gonna leave the number 47 because I can't really decompose that easily, but 80, I can decompose into eight times 10. So in 80, I have eight tens. Now, 47 times eight is not something that I just know off the top of my head. So I'm gonna actually have to solve on the side of my paper. If I don't know the answer, I need to skip count. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 33, 34, 56. And then seven times eight is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 56. I'm gonna put my six ones, leave it my five. Eight times four, one, two, three, four is 32, plus five is five, 37. And I get 376 tens. Again, I'm working in that tens place, so I can add a zero, because if I have 376 in the tens place, I'm going to have to regroup that and I would get 3,760. Okay, let's try. Um, now we're gonna kind of up the ante a little bit and now we're gonna move to the hundreds. So this is multiplying by hundreds. We're gonna use the same thing that we know about tens to do this. So if I wanted to find the product of 24 and 300, and again, product means to multiply, there's three different ways I can do this. Let's look at method one first. Method one is to kind of break apart the number. 
So I could use 24 times 300 and I can break up this 300 into three times 100. So I could say instead 24 times three times 100. And if I solve 24 times three, I would get 72. And then it's easy to multiply by 100. Again, if I have 72 in the hundreds place, I'm going to have to regroup that number. And in the number 100, there are two zeros. So I know that I can move over 72 to place values and I can add those two zeros to get 7,200. Another way of looking at it for that same problem, 24 times 300, is to break it up a little bit differently, um, but kind of the same way, just to do it in a different order. I could do 24 times 100 times three. I could do 24 times 100 first, get 2,400, and then I can multiply that by three and get 7,200. I get the same answer, it's just that I went about it in a different way. Um, and then I also can do it in word form, which I actually think I prefer the best, but you can pick the method you like. 24 times 300 is the same as 24 times 300. So I could do 24 times three and get 72 hundreds. And then if I'm working with my hundreds, I know that I have to add those two zeros for the hundreds place value. So we're gonna try some where you have to fill it in. So let's try, I'm gonna show you number six and then you're gonna try the other three on your own. So number six says 43 times 50 equals. So this is our original problem. We haven't learned how to do this yet. So we have to decompose the number. So if I'm doing 43 times 50, they want me to do this next. 43 times blank times 10. Well, I've got the 43 and I've got the five, but I'm missing like the 50, the five tens part. So I'm gonna break up 50 into five and 10. So I'm gonna put the 10 here, okay? Then it says equals something times five. Well, this five has moved over. So I need to actually solve 43 times 10. That's an easy math fact. If I have 43 in the tens place, I know I'm just adding a zero because I'm regrouping to the hundred. 430. Now I can actually solve 430.5 because that's a problem that I can do. And I get 2,150. So I've taken this problem that I'm not sure how to do yet with double digits, broken it apart and decomposed the numbers so that I can. I want you to pause and see if you can figure out seven, eight, and nine and what would go in those blanks, blanks and then press play when you're ready. All right, number, I'm gonna erase this, number seven, let's check this one. It says 216 times 30 equals, again, I don't know how to do this, so I'm going to decompose the number. I have in my first section, 216 times something times 10. Well, I have the 216, they got the 10 from this 30, but 30 is really three tens, so I need to bring the three over here. So I'm really doing 216 times three times 10. And then it says that equals something times 10. So I brought the 10 over and I only have one blank, so I know that I need to actually solve 216 times three. Now, if I don't know my facts, I can skip to the side. Three times six is 18, put my eight and my regroup my 110. Three times one is three, plus one more is four, and three times two is six. So I would get 648 times 10. Now I can actually solve that. 648 times 10 is 6,480. I put that zero because I am moving over in place value. All right, the next one is 37 times 200. Um, again, we don't know how to do this yet, so we're decomposing still. So that's the original problem. They first want me to break it up into 37 times something times 100. Well, this 37 is right here. They got the 100 from this 200, but if I were gonna break up 200, that's 100 times two. So I'm gonna keep the two over here. Now I can do the actual problem, and they want me to do something times 100. So I'm moving the 100 over. So I need to actually solve 37 times two, which I can do on the side of my paper. Two times um, seven ones is 14 ones, Regroup group my 10. Two times three tens is six tens plus one is seven tens, so I get 74. And then 74 times 100, again, if I have 74 things in the hundreds place, I can't have that many things in the hundred, I'm going to have to regroup. 
And I know that when I'm multiplying by hundreds, I'm adding two zeros because in the number hundred, there are two zeros in it. So I'm going to do 74 times 100 is 74. And then two zeros for the hundreds place is 7,400. All right, last one, let's do 75 times 800. Again, I don't know how to do. I don't know how to do that problem. So I'm going to break it up. I have 75 times something times, oops, times eight. So I've got my 75. They got the eight from the 800, and I know that if they broke up the eight, the other piece has to be 100. So now I'm going to actually solve, and this time it says it's some number times eight. So they're removing the eight over here. So I actually have to solve 75 times 100, which I can do mentally, because I know that if I have 75 in the hundreds place, I'm adding two zeros. Then I have to do 7,500 times eight, which is something I can do. Again, if I don't know my eight facts, I'm going to have to skip count. One, two, three, four, five. Eight times five is 40. And then eight times seven is 56 plus four is 60. And I get 60,000. Okay? So the whole purpose of this, guys, is to practice decomposing numbers into simpler, easier tasks. So we're going to try. These are the last two. I really want you to try and pause and see if you can just solve these four problems, decomposing it in any way or not at all, or whatever makes most sense for you to be able to solve this problem. So go ahead and solve, and then press play when you're ready to check. All right, 32 times 10. Many of you might just look at this and say, oh, I'm doing 32 times 10. That's 320 because I'm in the tens place, so I have to add that zero. I like to think of it as 32 times 110, which equals 32 tens. And then I can see why 32 tens is 320. Either way is fine. 457 times 10, most of you probably see that you're in the tens place. You are adding that zero which is 4,570. Um, I like to see it as 457 times 110, which is 457 tens, which gets you 4,570. Now I have to do 93 times 30. Ooh, this one's trickier because we don't know how to do double digit by double digit yet. So we're gonna have to break this up. I would break up 30 into three and 10. So if it were me, I think that I would do, I say like the, tens for last. I would first do 93 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 9 is 27. Then though, so I did 93 times 3, I need to multiply it by that 10. And I know that that would get me 2, 7, 9, add my 0. 2,750. If I had to do 210 times 20, um, I would keep my 210 and I would break up my 20 into 2 and into 10. And I would solve this first, 210 times 2. And then I have to multiply that by 10. And again, if I'm multiplying by 10, I'm adding that 0 for the 10th place. And then I have to add the 0. And I'll get 4,200. 41 times 500. I would keep my 41 and 500, I would split into 5 times 100. And I first would do 41 times 5. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 4 is 20. And then I can't forget I'm multiplying by 100. And if I'm in 100, that's two zeros because hundreds is two place values over. And if I have 205 in the hundreds place, I'm going to have to reroute that. So I have 205. So I'm multiplying it by 100. I'm adding those two zeros for the hundreds place. And I get 20,500. Then I have 68 times 800. I'm going to break up 800 into 8 times 200, and I'm going to do 68 times 8 first. If you don't know your facts, you're going to have to skip count. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 6 is 48 plus 6. 9, 50, 1, 2, 3, um, 54. And then I'm multiplying it times 100. So again, I need to add those two zeros. Oops. Um, and I get 5, 4, um, 
And then the only thing that I want to quickly tell you and remind you is that when we are multiplying, um, another way to see this is if I am multiplying, like in the number, or in the word 10, I think of a 10 always has one zero. A hundred always has two zeros, because if you think about it, 10, one zero, 100, two zeros. If I'm multiplying by thousands, thousands always have three zeros. Okay, so if I'm doing like four times 10, I know that's 40, because a 10 has one zero. If I'm doing four times 100, I know that I'm adding two zeros, because hundreds have two zeros. Four times 1,000 is 4,000, so that has three zeros. Okay, um, we're going to continue practicing this and decomposing numbers, but next we'll, we, this, the reason that this helps us is when we get to double digit by double digit, and this is just having a better understanding and being able to break apart problems and making them a little bit easier for you to solve and really think about place value. All right, bye guys.